Welcome to Too Fun of Books. My name is Janelle and this is my October book haul. I managed to acquire 55 books in the month of October and uh, partly because the Salvation Army thrift store in town had a 50% off book sale, flash sale, one day only. Uh, so <laughs> this is a lot of books, so I'm not going to be able to go into great detail about any of the books and let's just dive right in. I got the big over Easy by Jasper Ford, which is the first in his um, nursery crime um, series, nursery crime investigations. I'm not entirely sure what he calls it. I love Jasper Ford. I found three fantastic editions of Mary Roberts Reinhardt. She's an American writer from the early uh, 1900s. Uh, the Frightened Wife from 1944. This edition is from 63. The Street of Seven Steps from 1914. This edition is 1966. And The Red Lamp from 1925. And this edition is from 61. I really love especially these Dell editions. Um, I am such a huge fan, so I'm excited that I found those. Um, I found a Dorothy Simpson Dead and Gone. This is from her Inspector um, Thanet series. This is the 15th, so he is a detective inspector in England. Um, and I forget where in England. Doesn't really matter. I enjoy this Dorothy Simpson series. This is from the, a series from the 80s and 90s, I believe. Um, and I found another Elizabeth Ferris, Alive and Dead. Elizabeth Ferris wrote in also in the 80s and 90s. Oh, nope, starting in 74, I guess. This one is um, 74. I found a Mrs. Jeffries. Mrs. Jeffries appeals the verdict. These are Victorian cozy mysteries and Mrs. Jeffries is the housekeeper for an inspector from Scotland Yard. Uh, so I, I enjoy those. They're light, simple reads. I got a Lady Darby mystery as Death Draws Near by Anna Lee Huber. I'm trying to collect this series. I really enjoy this series. Um, they're set in the early 1800s in Scotland um, and um, um, Lady Darby was married to um, an anatomist and uh, um, and so he got her to draw pictures of anatomy for him uh, because she's very good at drawing. Um, and so it, it's just a really interesting series, really interesting characters. I got Edmund Crispin's The Glimpses of the Moon. I believe this is the last of his Gervais Fenn Oxford mysteries. Um, he wrote these in... Um, I think they like they kind of went from the 50s to the 70s. This is from 77. This is the last in the series. But I have to say I love these new editions of, of his mysteries. I got Abigail Wilson, Midnight on the River Grey. Abigail Wilson is a new favorite author of mine. She writes Regency, uh, Regency romances and I believe this is also basically just a Regency romance. I mean, uh, or Regency mystery, more more like there's highwaymen involved and spies and I love it. I also got In the Shadow of Croft Towers, which is her first one. So I've read this one, but I haven't read um, that other one yet. And Con Igledon's War of the Roses Bloodline. This is the third Yes, the third in his War of the Roses series. I haven't read these yet, um, but I am very excited to get to these uh, historical fiction, uh, War of the Roses, can't go wrong. I found Pam Janoff's The Ambassador's Daughter. This was one I got, I think, at the 50% off sale. Look at it, it's like brand new. So this is historical fiction. Um, 
Paris 1919. And uh, yeah, I've never read anything by Pam Jenoff, but um, it was 50 cents, so worth giving it a try, right? I found Mastering the Art of French Cooking by Julia Child. I was so excited to find this. I also found this in that 50% off sale. So I got this for $1.50. This edition is from 1961. So it's like that's the year it was published in the United States. Um, uh, even if I don't cook very much from this cookbook, I love that I now have this in my collection just because it is a classic. And so I, um, yeah, I'm super excited about that. Sharon K. Penman's When Christ and His Saints Slept. This is a historical fiction from 1135. Um, Henry I has died and his only surviving daughter is Maud. But of course, historically, we know that uh, there were people that thought that she should not rule. And so um, this kind of tells the story of that time period when there was the war between the supporters of Maud and the supporters of Stephen. Um, I really like Sharon K. Penman, and I was super excited to find this. Dandy Gilver and the Unpleasantness in the Ballroom by Catriona McPherson. I love this series so much. This is a historical mystery series set in the 30s in Scotland. And Dandy Gilver is great. Like it's a it's a very light-hearted historical mystery series, um, and I was super excited to find to find this. The Other Bennett Sister by Janice Hadlow. I read this uh, this summer um, and really, really enjoyed it. So I was really excited to add this to my collection. I found King Solomon's Mines by H. Ryder Haggard. This was also from that 50% off sale, so I got it for $1.50. Um, this is a classic. First published in 1885. This edition was published in 1931. Um, it's a story that takes place in um, uh, Africa, Egypt, maybe Egypt. Um, and it is classic. I think like this, this story is like the original Indiana Jones. I've heard it kind of um, compared to that. It's mentioned in one of um, Elizabeth Peters, Amelia Peabody um, mysteries. So I'm, I'm really excited to read it. Dicey Deer, the Irish Cairn murder. This is a, it looks like a cozy set in Ireland. So why not, right? I found a couple of Lillian Beckwith, uh, Brock Blend and Beautiful Just. So she writes humorous stories that take place in the Hebrides and I have a number of other of her books and I quite enjoy them. Uh, this was written in 78 and 75. I found um, Leonard Tourney, The Player's Boy is Dead. This is an Elizabethan mystery. I have one other book from this series um, you don't see this series around very much, so I was pretty excited to find it. I believe it's a series from the 80s. This one is from 1980. Um, so this is a series where the main character is um, the country constable, Matthew Stock. And in this one, players come to town and uh, the player's boy is dead. English Country House Murders. This is a collection put together by Thomas Godfrey, classic crime fiction of Britain's upper crust. Um, so yeah, this is exciting and this is gonna be great for a upcoming project I will tell you about later. Um, but there are short stories in here from some of the classics um, 
Arthur Conan Doyle, Wilkie Collins, Baroness Orsi, R. Austin Freeman, J.K. Chesterton, Agatha Christie, Dorothy L. Sayers, Naya Marsh, Marjorie Allingham, Freeman Wills Cross, John Dixon Carr, Nicholas Blake, P.G. Woodhouse, Michael Ines, Ethel Lena White, Philip McDonald, Christiana Brand, Cyril Hare, Ruth Rendell, P.D. James. Right? Is that a lineup or what? I am super excited about this. Without a Trace, The Chronicles of Hugh de Singleton, Surgeon by Mel Starr. This is a historical mystery series that I really, really enjoy. They're set in um, the medieval time period. Let's see if I can get specific. 1373 in Oxfordshire. And the main character is a surgeon at the castle, Bampton Castle, um, and he gets himself uh, charged with investigating mysteries and murders. Damsel in Distress by Carola Dunn. This is from her um, Daisy Dalrymple series. This is a historical mystery series set in the 20s and I really enjoy them. She ends up marrying Alex Fletcher and he is an inspector with Scotland Yard and uh, they're just again just really fun and i love these new additions are fantastic now i found a couple victoria holt bride of penderick um, and this is a story set i believe in cornwall so yay oh yes high on the cornish cliffs a young bride finds herself trapped in a nightmare world of terror and smiling betrayal Perfect, right? I love it so much. Um, and this is from 1963. The Silk Vendetta, also by Victoria Holt, from 1987. And this one, um, once a hunting lodge for English kings, the majestic Silk House now stands as a testament to the Salmongers family's time-honored tradition of exquisite silk making. I got a couple Ian Rankins, Doors Open. This is one of his that is not a rebus. Shocking. Um, but this one, I believe, involves some kind of a heist. So, awesome. And then this one is a rebus, Saints of the Shadow Bible. Uh, rebus, saint or sinner. I found The Queen's Secret by Karen Harper. This is a story about Queen um, Elizabeth, 1939. Um, yeah, very, very interesting. And then I found, I can't believe I found both of them. Minette Walters' historical mystery story, or historical fiction, um, the Last Hours and The Turn of Midnight. This, these are, um, it's a duology, um, set in 1348 and it's a story about the Black Death. The Lady in the Cellar by Sinclair McKay, Murder, Scandal and Insanity in Victorian Bloomsbury. So this is historical true crime. And um, Alison Weir from her Six Tudor Queens series. This is Catherine Howard, the Scandalous Queen. Murder in the Snow by Gladys Mitchell. This has been renamed. It was also called or originally called uh, The Groaning Spinny. Um, and this is a, one of her Mrs. Bradley series from 1950. So Mrs. Bradley is a detective and a psychiatrist. And uh, this is a classic Christmas mystery that I am totally going to be reading this December. Aaron Elkin, Skull Duggery. Aaron Elkin writes a series of um, about Gideon Oliver, who is a 
um, anthropology professor. So very interesting character, interesting series. In this particular one, he is um, on vacation in Mexico with his wife. I've, I've only read one or two so far in this series, but I like um, that the, the main character is a anthropology professor. Um, fascinating. And so this one is from 2009. I found another in the Maggoty series by Joan Hess. This is Miracles in Maggoty. I'm trying to collect this series. This is a mystery series um, where the main character is Arlie Hanks, small town um, Arkansas. Uh, there, it's just totally full of really quirky characters. Uh, it's rather lighthearted, but good, but good mysteries. This series was from the 80s and 90s, I believe. This one, Miracles and Maggoty, is from 96. I found a, um, a Hazel Holt, Mrs. Mallory, and No Cure for Death. This is a series, I've read a few of these, um, and Sheila Mallory is, um, she just lives in a village and kind of like amateur sleuth kind of, uh, I would call it cozy, cozy mysteries. I found a couple of Veronica Stallwoods, uh, Death and the Oxford Box and Oxford Remains. I was super excited to find Death and the Oxford Box because this is the first in the series. So now I can finally read it. I started reading one um, but realized that I wanted to read them in order, so I waited. So this is a series set in Oxford, and the main character is um, Kate Ivory, who is a novelist, and she ends up getting involved in um, solving mysteries. I found this edition of Agatha Christie's Evil Under the Sun, and I was so excited. I got rid of my other edition um, because this one is just so fantastic. Very exciting. Evil Under the Sun is a Poirot mystery from 1941. I found a couple by an author I had never heard of before, Anna Clark. I got The Case of the Ludicrous Letters and The Case of the Paranoid Patient. What caught my eye was this um, review that said, Mystery in the Best Selling Tradition of P.D. James. So these are set um, or written in the 90s. And Paula Glennings is the main character. Never heard of them, but totally willing to give it a try. And then I got a couple um, <laughs> gothic suspense. I super love gothic uh, suspense. It's kind of like my guilty pleasure read. So this is The Ice Forest by Virginia Kaufman in frozen woods of glittering evil and a young English girl is drawn into a terrifying charade of love and death. Isn't that awesome? So this is set in 1815 um, in France and it was written in 1975. And then I also found The Shrouded Tower by Teresa Charles. Was she too late to save her sister from the fate that awaited all the mistresses of that shadow haunted castle? Um, and I'm not entirely sure where this is set, but it sounds awesome. And this was written in 65. I found uh, John Dixon Carr, Till Death Do Us Part. Um, this is one of, uh, oh, I was gonna say Henry Merrillville, but I think that's a different series. Oh no, it's a Dr. Fell mystery, written in 1944. The poisoning in Gallows Lane, six months after she arrived in Six Ashes, half the men were in love with beautiful Leslie Grant 
and one of them was going to marry her until Sir Harvey Gilman, London's murder expert, told him that lovely young girl is 41 years old. She poisoned two husbands and one lover, and no one knows how. A few hours later, Sir Harvey was dead, poisoned in a sealed room, a novel of diabolical murder. So uh, John Dixon Carr is the master of locked room mysteries. And Carter Dixon, uh, and this is a pseudonym for John Dixon Carr, uh, this is the Sir Henry Merrillville. The reader is warned. This is from 1939. At 7.15, the mind reader suggested to Dr. John Sanders that sound waves can shatter glass or even kill a man. The same applies to thought waves, he said. At 7.55, their host, Sam Constable, was found dead. Dead from no ascertainable cause, with nothing at all to show how he died. Can you kill a man by willing his death? And if it were possible so to commit murder, who in this company, shut up at four ways over a weekend, would have wished to kill blustering old Constable? Brilliant. Oh, I got them a little bit out of order. One more gothic that I found, Mystery on the Moors, original title, Sons of the Wolf by Barbara Michaels. This is published, first published in 1967. And um, yeah, yay. Ken Follett, A Dangerous Fortune. This is published in 1993 and it is set in 1866. Tragedy strikes the exclusive Winfield School when a young student drowns in a mysterious accident. His death and its aftermath initiate a spiraling circle of treachery that will span three decades. And this is the third in the Lady Eleanor Swift series, um, a Witness to Murder by Verity Bright. This one was so interesting. I read um, an advanced copy of this and then um, I, and then I ordered it because I love this series. They're set in 1920 and in this series Lady Eleanor who is 29, uh, single and 29, she's asked to stand for Parliament um, for her area and what's fascinating is that she is able to stand for Parliament but she is not yet actually able to vote. It's this bizarre period of time in England where a 29 year old woman could stand for Parliament but was not yet eligible to vote. Bizarre, right? And then The Roots of Betrayal by James Forrester. James Forrester is a pseudonym for Ian Mortimer who wrote the Time Traveler Guide his history books which are great. Um, and this is a historical mystery, 1564. Um, and uh, yeah, I am really excited about this. A man of faith, a nation of secrets, a world of fear. And I also got Elizabeth Daly's last Henry Gamage. It's the 16th one that she wrote called The Book of the Crime. This is a series that she wrote in the 40s. And Henry Gamage is a rare book dealer, book expert. Um, and so this is kind of what Otto Penzler uh, coined a biblio mystery. Nicholas Tallis, Crown of Blood, The Deadly Inheritance of Lady Jane Grey. This is a history book looking at Lady Jane Grey. And um, yeah, I'm really excited that I got a hold of that. From the Charred Remains by Susanna Calkins. This is part of her um, historical mystery series. They are set in, this one is 1666 and the great fire has happened. They're cleaning up and um, the main character, uh, ladies maid Lucy Campion, finds a dead body among the wreckage that was not burnt in the fire that was obviously killed, uh, murdered. And uh, she's a ladies maid and the master of the house is a magistrate. Um, I really, really like this series. And then finally, C.J. Sansom, Tombland. This is the latest or possibly the last 
in his Matthew Shard Lake series. Um, summer 1549, two years after the death of Henry VIII, England is sliding into chaos. The nominal king, Edward VI, is 11 years old. And um, I, I have read this, um, and I love it, and I am super excited to have it. I am collecting the entire Matthew Shard Lake series. Um, it is a fantastic historical mystery series. So there you have it. There is my massive October book haul. What do you think? Have you read any of these books? Um, if you have, uh, in the comment section down below, tell me where you think I should start. Now, some of these books I've read and I'm just adding them to my collection and others I have not, and you won't necessarily know, but just from uh, what looked intriguing to you, where do you think I should start reading from this massive collection? I would love to have your ideas for that in the comment section down below, and I will see you for another video soon. Bye.